97.3 ESPN.com. Phillies reporter Frank Close, who joins us now on the Boardwalk Honda Hotline. His mailbag questions are posted. We'll get into them in a second. But, Frank, I first want to ask you about Bryce Harper and the press conference and, you know, some of the things he said. You know, obviously he seems – did he clear the air for anybody who may have doubted that he wants to be here? I think so. Uh, You know, I think what we saw from Bryce Harper in the press conference, somebody who was very sincere, uh, I think from what we've heard from Scott Boris, who has done interviews nationally, Bryce Harper really wanted to go to a place that would be home. And he wanted to, he wants to have children soon. You know, he and his wife, Kayla, they want to settle into a nice community, have a family, and really, really make wherever they come to play home. And, you know, he, he went to that negotiation table saying that the team he signs with, he wants to have his Cooperstown uh, caps be that team. And he constantly spoke of of wanting to make this new organization, whichever it was, to be his family. And that seems to be what drove this process. You know, there's a tremendous article on The Athletic from Matt Gelb. I encourage everybody to check out. I uh, encourage you to sign up for The Athletic, but he really kind of detailed the process where the Phillies ended up ultimately signing Harper, and it really sounds like this is a, a really sin- sincere individual who wanted to be here, wanted to make this place his home, and I think any rumors out there that he didn't want to play for Philly uh, probably would be some sort of posturing by the agent through the media, perhaps. There seems to be absolutely no validity to it whatsoever. Yeah, he came off pretty sincere. He came off as a guy who thought a lot about where he wanted to be, and I don't want any opt-outs. I wanted to stay here for the rest of my career, 13 years in Philadelphia. He even joked that I take $26 million. That keeps things open for other guys. And, you know, he has made a couple of references to Mike Trout uh, down the road, and you wrote about it at 97.3 ESPN.com, Frank, about those two guys texting throughout this process. So it seems that Harper – is going to a be a recruiter for the Phillies down the road. Yeah, you know, that's one thing he said. He wants to be the guy that's there long-term, that will be the one who not just is a face of the franchise, but helps attract other faces of the franchise. And, you know, the, the Mike Trout discussion, that's, we're going to get that nonstop for the next two years because that's the next big name that could come down the pike. And when you spread your $330 million over 13 years, uh, that average annual value is only $25.4 million. And, you know, that the luxury tax is calculated by the average annual value of the contracts, not what the player is making that individual year. So that really is a lower number. The last few years of this deal are only for $22 million. So that keeps the number down and, in, and definitely lets the Phillies have some flexibility to add another impact player. So until we find that Mike Trout has signed an extension with the Angels, which he won't even discuss at the moment, he said he, he's not going to discuss it this spring training or season, which kind of raises some eyebrows. Uh, but until he's a free agent, we're going to keep wondering if that will be the next person to join the Phillies. By the way, Harper is going to uh, go in a simulated game tomorrow. He'll face uh, Jared Eikhoff, and then he will uh, play on Saturday against the Blue Jays. So anybody heading down there this weekend, you'll get a chance to see Bryce play on Saturday. Let's get into some of the mailbag questions for Frank. These are questions submitted by listeners and fans uh, at Frank Close. By the way, today it's Aaron Nola making his Grapefruit League debut. We'll get you an update on how he does uh, in just a minute here. Uh, let's go to the bench, Frank. Uh, David wants to know your prediction. We It's like the Sixers. They have a great starting five. But who are the bench players? You know, I did not get a single Bryce Harper question for the first time in a long time, so it's actually kind of refreshing. Uh, but it is a testament to how well the starters are and how obvious the starters are going to be. But, you know, the Phillies bench is really going to depend on the health of a couple players here. We know uh, Roman Quinn and Odubel Herrera are currently out with injuries. Uh, some good news coming in today. Mon- uh, Megan Montemuro of The Athletics said that Roman Quinn is ahead of schedule, and his recovery is going pretty well, and, and putting day is very much in play for him. And Odubel Herrera actually has the flu right now, so that's kind of keeping us from knowing how his hamstring injury is responding. But but the Phillies have too many players for their, for their roster right now, which is an interesting problem to have. You know, you look at the outfield, now that you've added Harper you know, McCutcheon, you know, the two of them aren't going anywhere. And then you have Quinn Herrera, Altair, and Nick Williams. 
And one of those guys is not going to sit on the roster when you look at the bench because if the Phillies go with 13 pitchers, which they very well may do, that only leaves room for Scott Kingery, the backup catcher, uh, who I believe will be Andrew Knapp still. And then it leaves room for, for, for one fewer player than the Phillies have. And, and, and really to kind of sort that out, I would, I would say that Nick Williams, I think, would have to be options of the minor leagues. Now, that sounds a little bit alarming because Nick Williams is a pretty decent, promising young player. But of all those players that we mentioned in the outfield, only Nick Williams can be sent to the minor leagues. And because Nick Williams can be sent to the minor leagues, if he's on your roster along with everybody else, everybody's healthy, somebody's got to go. And if you want to keep him in the organization and keep all the other players in the organization, it's probably got to be him. Now, now Aaron Altair, he's he's really your one backup center field option uh, beyond Herrera and Quinn. Again, if they're not healthy, everybody fits if one of them isn't healthy. But, uh, but also Aaron Altair is a right-handed bat that they could use on the bench. And, you know, when you consider the 13-man bullpen that they might use, uh, Scott Carey's got to be your only backup infielder. So that really squeezes the Phillies dramatically. Uh, I think somebody like Sean Rodriguez, if he's healthy, uh, he had a little setback early on, but he's playing games now, is probably somebody good to have on your roster if you have 12 pitchers because Rodriguez can give you versatility in the infield and outfield. You know, one thing about your, your backup infielder, you always kind of need somebody who's going to be your uh, reserve up the middle uh, who can play shorter or second base. To, to be on the bench is kind of the last bat off the bench because if, if you have an injury to one of those guys, what do you do? So um, so I think it would be helpful if Kingery could hit a little bit more and uh, you'd have somebody else to be that last guy, and I think Sean Rodriguez could be that guy. So a lot depends on, on bullpen, but there are, there are many relievers competing for spots and if they keep 13 in the bullpen, uh, then then I think you need to send Nick Williams to AAA. Or, but the other caveat here is, I think at this point you want to trade somebody. Um, not that you're trying to push any particular player off to another team, but you know if you call, if you're the Phillies, you call up another team and say, hey, listen, we just signed Bryce Harper. Uh, we've got a, we've got a lot of really promising outfielders that aren't Bryce Harper. Uh, do any of them interest you? And then maybe you can you can work out a trade to get some assets for the future. That might be the best way to maximize this. Because, I, I mean, even beyond these guys, Dylan Cousins is having a nice spring. So um, they, they have other people they can call up in a pinch if they do trade one of these young players. Zach wants to know, what's going to happen to Adam Morgan with all those arms in the bullpen? Yeah, the funny thing is, and you know, Zach's one of our loyal listeners, uh, I don't know if he's pro Adam Morgan or anti Adam Morgan. I know Adam Morgan took a lot of heat from fans when he was uh, in the starting rotation, for example, and then as he got used to the bullpen. But I actually think pretty highly of Adam Morgan in the bullpen as one of the left-handed relievers. And Adam Morgan, w- one thing that people don't realize is that he he struck out more than a batter an inning if you look at his numbers throughout the course of last season, and that's pretty significant because. Often your left-handed reliever comes in to face a tough lefty after the previous reliever left a couple runners on base. So somebody that's got a good track record for striking guys out might be the right guy to shut down that inning. And I think Adam Morgan showed great improvement from the time when he was a starter. Uh, his first time as a reliever when the Phillies seemed to use him as a long man, I didn't see him doing very well in that role where he was expected to go many innings. But I think that he that since he became kind of the, the go to left handed guy and you know, I look at some of the big games last year, like when they faced the Red Sox, I you know, I credit the Phillies beating the Red Sox half the time to someone like Adam Morgan taking care of those lefties in the Red Sox lineup. So so I think he's in good spot to stay. And, you know, if I'm just kinda of running through the bullpen to figure out how it shakes out, you know, obviously you have David Robertson, their the free agent signee who will be on there. Uh, Nishak, Hunter, Nicasio, they're all right-handed veterans under contract. And Sir Anthony Dominguez certainly isn't going to go anywhere. Uh, but beyond that, I, I think Jose Alvarez is going to be the next left-handed arm in the bullpen. The Phillies picked him up from the Los Angeles Angels in exchange for Luis Garcia. Now, uh, Alvarez struggled a little bit early on for the Angels, but had a really good second half. And I think he's going to get the first shot to be a left-handed arm out of the bullpen to pair with Morgan. And then if the Phillies do take 13 pitchers, and there's there's a, there's an uh, eighth reliever there, I think it's got to be Hector Neris. Now, if you consider the bullpens the Phillies have had the last few years, 
you're talking Neris being the eighth guy, if you go an eighth guy. And Ed O'Brien Ramos and Durano have to start in AAA because there is way too much inventory. Now, uh, Tommy Hunter is injured right now. If he doesn't make it back, then certainly the uh, – the, the, um, and actually, I didn't even put Yaxel Rios in the conversation, but he's had some good outings. So the Phillies have a lot of depth from which they can draw if anybody happens to get injured. But I, th- I think that uh, I think that Adam Morgan right now is their top lefty in the bullpen, and I think the good job that he did last year can carry over into the season as well. Uh, Aaron Noah, three innings today, three strikeouts, a walk, one hit. Pavetta came in relief, two and a third. He had three walks. Uh, in the uh, game today. Neris came in, had two strikeouts in an inning pitch, so uh, some good outings by some of the Phillies today. Bottom of the eighth, 1-1 against the Cardinals. Frank Close has the Phillies mailbag for you. Always Tuesdays right here on the Sports Bash at Frank Close. Get your questions in, and, uh, of course, each week here on the Bash. We told you the other day, uh, Arietta struck out four over three innings of work in uh, the Grapefruit League. So, Arietta, Nola going today. You're going to start to see the regulars uh, this weekend and Bryce Harper likely on Saturday. All right, Frank, uh, where are you heading back down? I'm heading back down on Tuesday morning early. Uh, Tuesday's a day off for the Sills, but it should be a great weekend. St. Patrick's Day weekend is always a tremendous time to be down in Clearwater. Yeah, man, I'm missing St. Patty's Day this week, this year, but I will be there for a slew of games late in the spring. All right, Frank, we'll see you soon, pal. Have a good one, guys.